Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second episode on convexity in which we are going to look at the mathematical formula and its use in estimating interest rate risk. I have derived the formula for the more mathematically inclined amongst you and you can pause the video anytime to study the derivation which I have highlighted in green here. For those of you who would rather use the formula straight away, you can just remember that convexity is nothing but the second derivative of the bond pricing equation with respect to yield and at the end of all the derivation process this is going to be our final result which I've highlighted in yellow here and even if this looks a little daunting to use uh, what we can do is we can straight away assume some numerical data and get started with solving for convexity and as we go along this formula might start looking more intuitive to you. So let us uh, look at a bond which is currently priced at $964.54, has a 4% coupon rate, makes annual interest payments and the current estimate of the yield is 5% per annum. This bond also my friends has 4 years to go for maturity. Now to start our calculation process what we need to do is we need to uh, construct a table with five columns and in this particular case four rows why four rows because there are four years remaining to maturity so in the first column here we write down our periods one two three and four and in the second column i have already written the cash flows um, from the bond forty dollars coupon amount at the end of the first year forty dollars again at the end of the second year forty again at the end of the third year and when the bond matures at the end of four years, it returns back its face value to you also along with the coupon payment. Therefore, the total cash inflow is $1,040 at the end of the fourth period. Now, let us uh, move over to column number three in which what, in which what we want to do is uh, to find out the present value of these cash flows. So, we want to discount these cash flows here and write the result in column number three. So let us get started with column number three. Let us take the discounted value of the $40. So let me select this 40 and then I need to divide it by one plus my discount rate, which is the yield equal to 5%. So I simply write here 1.05 and close my bracket. And this is going to be my discounted value of the first $40 at the end of the first year. Similarly, I can find out the discounted value at the end of the second year. Let's do that. Let us select this $40 and then divide it by 1.05. And then since this is the second year, let us not forget to raise this to, to the power of 2. And then close our bracket. Now let us uh, drag and drop this formula to speed up the things a little bit. We are going to make just one little change select this cell and make sure that you are raising this to the power of three because we are talking about the third period here so i'm changing it to three and that is okay and for this cell since this is the fourth period we should raise it to the power of four and now this should also be okay now what you have done here is in formula terms column number three is similar to this term here cft divided by one plus y to the power of t what you have done is you have taken the discounted value of cash flows here. Now let us move to column number four here in which what we are doing is we are finding out the value for T squared plus T where T stands for time. So let us do that here in this cell for the first time period. T squared, the value of T is one here. So I select this and I need to square it. So I raise it to the power of two. And then after that, I need to add the value for the period again so I select this cell again and then close my brackets to get my result which is 1 squared plus 1 that is 2 and to speed up the process let's drag and drop this formula down to get all the cells filled in this column and in the uh, formula terms this t squared plus t that is all the values in this cell are actually this item here t squared plus t now, if you look at the formula again, you will realize that the discounted value of the cash flows need to be multiplied by the sum of t squared plus t. And that is exactly what we are going to do in column number five. We are going to take a product between column number three, this one, and column number four, this one. So let us do it for one cell here and we will drag and drop the formula later. So the value in column number three here is supposed to be multiplied by the value in column number four here 
and then we close the bracket get our result and drag and drop the formula for all the cells now since this cell also this column also is complete what we need to do let's go back to our formula let us see that we have taken a product between the discounted value of the cash flows and the sum of t squared plus t but then we need to add up all the terms that is what this summation sign stands for so all these terms this one this one this one and this one need to be added up so that is what we are going to do here we are going to write the result of the addition here so let me go here and add up all the values in this column and my result is 17,821. So I stored this result away for later use because I still need to figure out this item here in the formula which is 1 over P times 1 plus Y whole square where P stands for the price of the bond and Y is our YTM. So that is why I have written here 1 over P times 1 plus Y whole square and in this cell let us find out the value for that. So I start a bracket, write a 1 and then I'm going to divide it by first of all the price of the bond. So let me write down the price of the bond 964.54 and then I'm going to close the bracket. What I'm supposed to do next is to multiply this price of the bond by 1 plus the discount rate or the yield which is 0 .5, uh, 0 0.05. So I write here 0 0.05 and then what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to square it up so I'm raising it to the power of 2 and then closing my relevant brackets to get this result. Now in terms of the formula what you need to do is you need to multiply the result of this item with this result the summation result that is this is the summation result and this is 1 over p times 1 plus y whole square so we can very quickly find out the convexity here by simply multiplying this value with this value and this is going to be your result for convexity 16.75 now let us use this estimate of convexity to find out the percentage change in price and we are assuming that let us uh, uh, allow the yield to rise by one percent and let us see by what amount the price of the bond is going to change for that purpose we have this formula with us if you ignore the convexity part that is this part here for a moment you are going to realize that what we have written here is percentage change in price is equal to minus modified duration times the change in yield. Now if you want to accommodate the convexity into this formula you go ahead and write a plus sign and write half of convexity times change in the yield squared. Now for using this formula we are going to have to uh, need an estimate for modified duration which is provided to us here 3.59 years and we can use that very quickly here to find out the percentage change in price. So let us start doing that in this cell. What we need to do is we need to first of all write minus modified duration so I put a minus sign and then this is my modified duration so I select this and then I am supposed to multiply that by the um, change in yield which is 1% so I'm writing here 0 0.01 after that I'm supposed to put a plus sign and then I see that there's a half here so I write a 0 0.5 here and then what I'm supposed to do I'm supposed to multiply by the convexity estimate which is this item here so I select this and then what I'm supposed to do I'm supposed to multiply that by the square of the change in yield so I'm going to write the change in yield 0 0.01 and then I'm going to um, square the thing up and close the bracket so this is going to be my percentage change in price minus 0 0.03506209 or simply 3.5 percent roughly a negative change because um, the yield is increasing you see and therefore the price of the bond should fall and in this case it falls by three and a half percentage point. Um, if you want to use this result my friends to find out the change in price you can do that very easily by simply multiplying the percentage change by the original price of the bond. So let me do that here for you very very quickly. The original price or the starting price of the bond was $964.54 and you simply multiply it by the estimate of percentage change in price which is this item here. So we select this and close the bracket 
and that gives us the result that the bond price is going to fall by $33 and about 82 cents and you can also figure out the new price very quickly let me do it here for you 964.54 was the starting price and since it's dropping by $33.82 we simply accommodate that here and close the bracket and arrive at the new price of the bond which is going to be $930 and about 72 cents. Thank you very much my friends. I hope this was useful for you. Bye-bye.